so Andy, um, hi, welcome uh, to our podcast video, whatever it is. Thanks and for inviting uh, me. It's an honor. Uh, yeah, for the first time um, in this uh, official environment, in in your new studio, and uh, I would like to talk about our uh, journey with the punt guns. So um, the first thing, you know, first, uh, I would like to ask you what 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 is the thing, you know. Which make you just say yes, you know, when the two guys like us, you know, approached you in your uh, in the studio, you got in. Uh, it was in a plateau in Parsons Green, right? Yeah. For yeah. the first time when we met, and uh, we met you as a. Um, for me, it was a, uh, it was a meeting like the like a big, famous producer, with you know simple minds, uh, simpler red, massive attack, Jeff Beck, you know. You name it, um, any Lennox. It's uh, it's it's incredible what you've done in your in your career. Uh, so we had a huge respect uh, to to your to your uh, to your um, experience, and uh, we came there as a as a new upcoming band. Uh, so what what do you think of us? And uh, can added, you describe the process? Start, you know, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> it's like every. Um, I think it's the same in every car- every kind of <coughs> you know field of uh, work. Really, you know, you you interact with people that come to you. <laughs> what I've for some reason never really done is interact too much with social media, and I've always managed to try. I've noticed that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you have an impressive Wik- <coughs> Wikipedia page. Yeah, the Wikipedia page is good. Th- thanks, thanks very much. He's a, he's a, he's <laughs> you see, he's it's very impressive, you know. He's, he's the nuts. <laughs> um, I have an allergy. <laughs> R.I.P. <Mike>. No, <laughs> he's always got a nut allergy, oh, and he just bloody has, almonds asked me for the nuts. <laughs> um, okay, well, I mean, we, obviously we can um, we can edit into edit the, uh, the Marek dying yeah, yeah. while I answer the question. Oh, that, that's why I never eat nuts, you know. When I'm well, it's a, it was a kind of it's it's a, it's a, you know I don't, I'm not even sure it's an intelligent choice. I'll be honest. It's uh-huh. just the way it sort of turned out for me. But, you know, the, in a way, I kind of already had a long period of of kind of achieving, you know, quite a lot that I thought was. Not, I mean. You know, a lot of people are using social media to attract attention towards themselves, yeah. to get more more situations, more work. And, and I actually want to get less work and uh, less attention and less, you, you know. So in a way, um, what comes to me is people approach me, um, you know, all the time, you know, with with their projects. And for some reason, I mean, they can contact me through my website and they tend to so I get quite a lot of that all the time and then of course there's a sort of word of mouth thing where pe- people will you know say by the way have you thought about talking to this yeah. in, in, th- in this instance that's what happened because Gigi and I had the, you know a, a, a sort of a person in common who put put us together and uh, <coughs> and so yes I mean I think the the the, the first most important thing to do in business uh, uh, apart from being in music really is to is to not um you know take a meeting so yeah. we took a meeting yeah. that's what we did you know i yeah. had a, yeah. a little look at the what you were doing look in the it eye. sounded interesting um <clears throat> and then we met together in in parsons green you guys came together and um we we got chatting. We got chatting about music. We got chatting about things that you liked, what you wanted to do, and uh, you know, from the off, it sounded really interesting to me. So, um, <coughs> so we take it to the next level. Of course, you know, I I was thinking, well, this would be a great project for Gavin and I to do together because we work together. Gavin Goldberg and, and myself, we worked together on projects for a, a long time, and um, you know, using his expertise as a producer and as as a engineer and a mixer would. A- enabled us to do something really good together with with a band that I hoped would be very open minded creatively. We, we got a crazy story because when we approached you for the first time, we were just two of us, and we were we were on a, on a, on our quest for the producer. So we took talk with the Howard Bellerman in Montreal. We talked with Sylvia Massey in Prague. It was it was, it was crazy and. Um, we got this uh, personal connection with you, but at the time when we met for the first time, there were just two of us. And then when we met for for, for the second time, uh, we just told you, okay, hey, Andy, look, you know, we got a whole band, so we got a drummer and a singer. So me playing bass, uh, 
samurai playing guitar. And um, and you're like, yeah, let's do it. And then the things changed after a few sessions. So that was a bit uh, unexpected. And uh, you still stick with us. And uh, that for, for us was an incredible moment because... Uh, it's it's not usual process, you know, how we record the album. So if if I recap, you know, we we scheduled the session as a full band, got a drummer, singer, everything, and then suddenly when this after the second session, you know, yeah. we got no singer, mm. and of course uh, the the know. singer was attached to the drummer. Yeah. So we knew that we also get no drummer. And we we recorded at the time it was a six songs and we were aiming for an album, and we really were were in the situation like ah, oh, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Well, it's and interesting because actually I mean <coughs> you know, firstly you you um, <coughs> you know I I always start a project with the idea that we'll we'll take a small step rather than a big step. Mm -hmm. I think that works for everyone because someone's mm -hmm. funding a project sometimes and you don't want. What the, the last thing you want is that you, you know, <coughs> take their money and they're unhappy. So I'd rather take a bit of it and see if they're all happy and then we'll go on. Mm -hmm. But of course, what happens then within the time that time frame is is that you artistically bond together a bit. You've uh, done some sessions together. You've been in the studio and you've realised that you really like what you do together, and you <coughs> and you like each other as well. And you think actually we we can really do something there. Um, but in this instance, I think what, what happened, which was really special, was that, that I met two people and then we ended up doing the record as with you two people. Yeah. And um, and whilst I might take some credit for going, this is a solution, Yeah. actually the thing that was a solution is is that you came in with a, a little recording either on your phone or something. Yeah, it was on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> your phone. Yeah. The song was called <laughs> This Could <laughs> Only and Badly. It's kind of, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Appropriately titled. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so Charisma, <laughs> he plays this um, thing. Yeah. And I go, it, it seemed like a, a oh, I remember. an epiphany yeah. to me where I can go, actually, guys, you're missing a trick here. It exactly. is actually you two guys, and it should be you two guys. Right. Let's make that work. And obviously, from a, um, a point of, you know, the, the actually, whilst it was always, in, you know, in the back of your mind as, as a dreamer, because yeah. we're all dreamers, by the way. Oh, we, we are. We, we are. don't get into rock and roll unless we're dreamers. No. And so, you, in your mind, you're going, I could be that guy, and you needed someone to say, you are that guy, yeah. and yeah, that's what we did. But I must tell you that before, when we were in Montreal as well, he had a already an experience where he yes, was so no, we, we, to, yeah. I, I, he told me yeah. about this. Yeah, Actually, I, did, I wasn't aware of it, but the, but the, but yeah. the other guy was right too. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, then, and then we had, had this thing in my phone. I remember your face when you guys listened to it for the first time. He's like, Oh, right, okay. Well, you're going to be the singer. Yeah, 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 be the singer. <laughs> yeah, be the of course you got be the singer. Obviously the thing is is you got to <laughs> you got to kind of figure out how you're going to play those those bass lines and sing at the same time. That's it. That's a bit like that, going like that. That, that, yeah. that, that was a <laughs> second <laughs> thing really, really yeah. hard to do. Oh but, um, my like, god, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, y y you know, we, yeah. we took it on. Yeah. And of course, you know, the the proof is in the pudding. I you know, so we it's true. we do a session and um uh, what we delivered out of that session kind of convinced us all, in a way. So yeah. after that, it was like we're on a new path. Right. And I liked that a bit more because I sort of felt a bit more that the, the, it was a this was a tight unit. There was no one that was involved in it um, for any other reason that they believe in the music and mm. they want to do it. So, you know... We could, as as you know, you know, we, we, you know, really, we could have easily have just gone. Look, you know, come back in a year or so when you've got a new band, and yep. we'll, we'll talk again. But yeah. that's actually very not our style. And we, 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 we right. you know, Gavin and I, we, we, we would, we would that, go. That, that, that was incredible because we came there as as a band, and and you you could s like see us, you know, like okay, this is you know, certain type of image and the music and everything because it was. And then suddenly everything changed completely, completely. And you took the risk and the challenge to create something from completely nothing. Because at, at the time when we we were recording the, the song together, the, the vocals for it, you know, the most secret thing, which is <laughs> actually a great, you know, title for a first song, you know, for the vocals, that th there was like six instrumental tracks and nothing. 
So we didn't know, and some of the tracks were played in the in the tonality and the, and the harmony as the previous singer asked for. So every song was in a different key. It was, it was completely crazy. It felt like training in a in a in a harmonies, you know. Mm-hmm. So one song in an E flat, one song in F, one song in D. One, it was crazy. So you. You had no idea, no, how I will cope with with, with the challenge, and uh, we went to the studio. Well, I left you with that problem. Oh in yeah. A way. Yeah. I mean, you, you. I mean, in truth, <laughs> I don't even mean that as a joke. You know, it was your problem to come that, back with that. that. that that's but true. But of course, uh, when you arrived back, uh-huh. I mean, what we did um, initially, you mm-hmm. and I, um, was. Um, we did a, a voyage of discovery with the vocals. Oh, and completely. It was, uh, every session that we did was like, okay, so what we're going to do here, let's think of the maddest thing we can think of yeah, yeah. and try and make your vocal work with that. You know, yeah. we used as much technology as we could find. We put sort of, you know, Bulgarian choirs with South Korean choirs with, uh, you know, you know, new romantic riffs and all sorts of stuff. It's, a, just it's a very a, global record. Yeah, actually. we threw a lot of things out on the page and then tried to morph those with vocals and try and make some sort of sound. Um, but I know that um, that was our process originally and it gave us mm. both a lot of confidence, you know, when we did that to to deliver a song. And in fact, I, I also think that what we did is, is you know, we it, Gigi was away He'd already kind of done the composition and the you know the guitar things. It was me and you for a short while. Yeah, we got these sessions. Yeah, and we do the little and sessions. And, and then what I do is is uh, you know go from f- from from Fulham up to Hammersmith. By which time we listened to the track in the car. On that little journey, and went, yeah, it's pretty good actually. That's really good. <laughs> we <laughs> sent it to the other two guys, yeah. you know, and they and then and it was and it was a feeling like yeah, I think there's there's something to work with there. It was really yeah. good. Yeah. But as Gavin pointed out, and uh, and he's right, you know, as uh, you know, as the confidence grew, the the the, the workflow changed, and, and and towards the end of that period, you were coming in and blasting out the vocals, because by then you you'd become charisma, and that was it. You were the guy. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It was an incredible journey from coming. It happened in, in actually, it was the less than a year that uh, oh, we got yeah, like, less than a year, yeah. yeah, and we got like six tracks, like no future, and then suddenly, uh, it it that w- that was in November, right? And then after December, like after after like eight months, we ended up with uh, eight tracks, full on, like a full album. And we were in the mixing and mastering stage, and we were thinking about okay, so yeah. we go- we we gonna well, make this a, big gig in in Subterranean, and it was incredible. Like uh, like everything just fall into place, and then suddenly the Pangas was revived as a unit, as a as a duo. But of course, we we got a drummer and the other guys in in in, in the equ- equation. But there were yeah, I mean, I think it's important to to say that at this point because you know just to to go across to Gigi here because you know this was a project that was was something that you bought you founded together it was your yeah, thing yeah. and and I think a lot of the initial work on the tracks was Gigi would come up with a riff and it would have its own unique time signature you know musical notes and together you made that into a piece of music that had a name and a title and then you went and developed it a bit further and we did the live sessions and all those things but you know from our point of view because every every session that you do every project that you do needs someone the other person to concur that you you have something and so what we did is we sent Gigi our our, our stuff we did the, the vocal sessions I'm talking about because the music was already created, you know, in the studio with Gigi, Gavin, Baron, uh, Jeff, or whatever. No, Jeff, not at that point. After, but Baron, yeah. That was it was uh, the last session. Yeah, was, the, but, the, but, the, but the music was already created to a point. So what we really needed to hear, because it was because that was a little bit like you and uh, our little voyage that we did, was that the other guys that were so integral to the project, Gigi went, fuck yeah, that's, yeah. that's really something. Yeah, that's and there right. was no one who was more supportive of that than Gigi, who was getting yeah. back and going, wow, this is my favourite song, you know, da, da, da. and, uh, you know, we're, we're listening to it, uh, you know, 10 times, 15 times a day. It's doing everything for us. So it kind of substantiated our theory on yeah. our feeling that we had something good yeah. going on. Uh, for me, I, w- I remember I was in Hong Kong when... Um, 
when uh, more sacred thing when you guys um, you know put the vocals on uh, more sacred thing and uh, it was like uh, yeah you're right I, I, I must have looped it like 20 times or something mm. you know? it was like what that yeah <laughs> but, but, but for music that originated yeah. with you guys and together without yeah. us even being involved for you to be able to be that positive about what we were going yeah. on was a huge moment for True. us as well because you know if you'd have come back to us and gone guys we're still looking for a singer yeah we would have still looked for a singer because we were waiting on you yeah, for sure. uh, to 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 well, it was very organic validate yeah. our, our our theory that we had what we needed yeah. you know no i think for for us uh you know, I think you used revive pun gun. Actually, it wasn't even reviving pun guns. It was the time when we definitely, for me, the feeling I had being afar, you know, in f that, that's it. We got our sound, we got our vibe, we got our energy, we got our identity. Yeah. You know. It emerged I, I, at that you know, time. Yeah. And I yeah, think it was a good it. thing because Mimi being, you know, wonderful presence that she yeah. was and a, and, a, and a real special human being uh in in in, in parenthesis really because she's unusual um but but the truth is it was always going to be this is punk guns and this is mimi yeah. it was never going to be like a real thing you know no, you yeah, just sure. got a singer in but it was already been her and you mm. exactly but actually yeah. it became you which is what it should be from the off yeah the the, the, the way how it was all built it was incredible like we we were running the songs constantly, so we got like twenty, thirty tracks, you know. And then we go to the studio, we just pick up the, the best ideas, you know. And then in the in the process, you're you think you, you know how to write a song, you know how to run a band, and and how to be in a studio. And but at this time with Punt Guns, everything was new. Everything was like okay, I have no idea you know how to write a song. I have no idea how the good recording session looks like you know i have no idea about the production everything was like you're thrown into the water and just swimming and uh you are just coping with it, it was really exciting it it was so incredible in so many uh, aspects you know that uh for me it's it's something i, I will never ever mm, forget in my life and it completely changed the way how i approach the music it changed the way how I play, they changed the, the, the way of everything. So uh, I'm really, really proud of our uh, efforts. And uh, we we got six tracks now out. And uh, I hope uh, the two remaining tracks, they'll be out soon and the whole album. And I want to ask you, like, uh, so far with the experience, you know, we got with that, you know, how would you imagine the, the second album? How would would it sound? How it look like? Um, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think about the lyrics? What do you think about a world we created and and all the stuff we went through? Well, I love you know um, if you look at careers like um, Amy Winehouse, for example, and then you, you got an album like Back to Black, and all of a sudden, you know, you've got a hit like Rehab, and uh -huh. everyone talks about this as a breakthrough <laughs> moment. Yeah, but then the the critical people say it's great but i prefer the first album uh -huh. you know this is the album she did before the big album yeah so it maybe i see it a little real. bit yeah. yeah i see it a bit like that i think you you know i think you, you, you know you you can absolutely grow from this point and the way to do that is now is to is to continue with your artistic journey um we don't need to do much different in a way you you will have already evolved you know your ev evolution is already happening because that first album was a massive evolution in the first place and now you can factor all of that progress into whatever work you do next i mean you, you know <coughs> i think that the important thing to do is to y you know I, I can't tell you how many times I have these kind of conversations, and, <laughs> and, and I'll yeah. explain what I mean Can by imagine, that. Yeah. Is because you, you know, uh, we, you know, we started out. I mean, Gigi's had a, a a career as well, and that's a wonderful thing because apart from being able to sort of help be, you know, 
person behind the project, keeping it going, and all the rest of it. You know, he has the ambition to be a musician as well, and to and to be, you know, the punt guns, which is really great. So we've got all that behind, and and I've got all that sort of period behind. So as Gavin, we've we've kind of done our journey, but um, but actually, people regularly do a first album, and then they say, you know, shall we do another album? And I'm thinking, well, actually. There was never a point when I uh, started doing my job after a certain point where I thought, actually, I could actually do anything else. So mm. this is my life. It's what it is. And if you're an artist, you shouldn't be going, you know, well, actually, that's it now. I've done my thing. This, Whatever you produce now, whatever you release, is your legacy. It's your legacy as an artist. And you actually, you can release it. It can go on Spotify. It can be there in the world as your legacy. You know, when we started this uh, project... Uh, three years ago, Marek said, um, "Let's the magic happen." Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, with music there will be magic, and this is one. R- it, what you just said right now, right? It's, 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 uh, it's, it's always magic, and you, yeah. you know, there's no, there's no other the journey. You're now on the journey. Yeah. So your second album is the next step of the journey. You know, I find it very disappointing if artists that you work with go, "Well, I had a go and it didn't really work." Mm. I think I leave it. I think your album's working great. All the tracks are going out. People are liking them. Yeah. It's on to the next movement now. But I think, I you know, what I would love to see happen is that album two is a, even better than album one. And I can't see any reason why it wouldn't be because you've become Punk Guns. Do you see what I mean? Punk Guns was a concept at the beginning. Yeah. And now it's a reality. And yeah. now whatever you do next, you're working into that thing that you created during the first thing it's like a small godzilla and by the way uh, you know obviously unless we're fired we, we, we'd love to help you do it so it's official <laughs> it's recorded <laughs> no it'll be wonderful yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, no. We, we, and i think we, we we pick up where we left off yeah. uh, but with everything we learned on the way we're doing the same journey yeah the thing like if if I just you know do a quick recap of our journey, you know we we did like three year recording sessions, you know like two in Asselton Battery, was <coughs> which is the studio studio owned by uh, Alan Mulder. It's your it's your body, you, you know you know you're uh, you're working to it together, and Alan is uh, famous for his uh, mixing and and working with Nine Inch Nails and the stuff and and the bands and the music which was created in Assel Battery is just uh, incredible. So the legacy was there, and what we've done there was crazy. Two drum kits uh, recorded bass through the Moog, and 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 the the, the sheer number of of uh, guitar effects, and and we were recording through Leslie Box, and you know Gavin did a like crazy job. It was you know just you know putting all this stuff together. It was incredible. And then the last session was ha- happened in, in a Soho. In the heart of London, in Dean Street, um, uh, Dean Street Studios, which is, uh, if 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 I get it right, you know, there's a uh, Bowie, the the heroes there. Yeah, well, Dean Street used to be it used to be known as Good Earth, and it was owned yeah. by um, Tony Visconti. Yeah? Tony Visconti. Yeah. Tony yeah. Visconti yeah. So some, yeah. I I actually went there when it was Good Earth uh, in the early eighties. It's uh, when I say early eighties, probably mid eighties actually. Well, it's crazy. Uh, I went there there at Good Earth when bands wow. were recording there and doing stuff and I, no. uh, uh, but it was actually a studio set up by Tony Visconti and no. of course some Bowie stuff was recorded there. Actually a lot of legendary stuff was recorded in Dean Street Studios. Yeah. And the guide piece? Probably. I mean yeah, they're, they're yeah. just the place. Yeah. 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 It was yeah. great, actually. I loved it because it was the first time I really worked in there. I mean, oh I really? I d- no, I did some stuff with Sinead O'Connor in there. I think in the in the sort of nineties. I mean, I can't really remember uh-huh. um, too much about it. I think I was too pissed. <laughs> but but, um, <laughs> but but I did. That, that was a great video. session, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't remember. It. Yeah. This, this seemed to like me. <laughs> 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 but it, but it, but we did. I did quite a few sessions there. But it was the first time I'd really kind of booked the studio and gone and done a session there. And we, uh-huh. we actually did another session in there shortly after as well yeah. because I like. I actually really like being in Soho. I like that. That yeah. vibe, it's yeah. really cool vibe, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, and, yeah. And, and it's actually kind of rare nowadays because those places are just disappearing, and um, it's just a shame, you know. Like, 
it's 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 a it's actually a little place. It's a little studio, but the history and everything and 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 where is located, it's uh, irreplaceable in the history. I think I think in the light of COVID and everything, yeah. I think a lot more will shut down. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's a big shame. But you know, you've got to remember that that we're looking at a history in the making here, yeah. and and you know, we 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 always feel like um, a year is a long time. In ten years' time, we might have a a, a whole new set of wonderful places yeah, em- emerging true, like true. phoenix from the flames i mean it can happen because everything changes all the time yeah it's true so i I, th- I think we can't really rue that i mean round the corner from dean street is trident where i sort of start off i met well, my oh. wife there and i met alan there i met flood there we we started mm. at trident that was like literally out of dean street left left and right and up the road and uh, and that was one of the most legendary studios in the world ever. You know, oh. Queen recorded in there, Alton John recorded in there, the Beatles recorded in there. It was a legendary studio. And uh, and now I walked past there. I t- took a walk up there whilst I was uh-huh. at Dean Street because it was a much bigger studio than Dean Street. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but you know it's like a I don't know it's like a voiceover place now. It's nothing. Right. Oh it? really? Uh, you know, it's just oh, like I see, a, yeah. Um, so it happens. You know, it happens yeah. in all forms of life, and you know. Do you think your new place here? Well, I think this is really it's modern. It's a, it's a start as, 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 a, a, new, as a concept, new and I'm really glad to be part of this. And it's it it's definitely of the moment, you know. Yeah. And I don't think, and I think, you know, because the world is changing all the time, you shouldn't be really worrying about whether it's it's everything that we had in the past. It's this is the future. But, but it's kind of like it's it's a soothing, you know, feeling like to be sentimental, right? It's great, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but, uh, but I think it's great here, and it's a community, and it's an evolving yeah. community. It's going to be great. This is going to be this is the West London, you know, hub of music mm. where we are right now, and will become so. It might take two or three years, especially in the light mm. of what's happening. But yeah. it, but it, but it is definitely going to be great because the studios are made well. They've thought about everything, so we've got <coughs> podcast rooms like we've got now. Um, we've got uh, you know a green screen room for doing videos yeah. for bands. You've got a, a conference room. You've got offices, uh, hot desks. You've got everything, and uh, this is where the world's at. So let's embrace that. It's wonderful. I can't. I'm so glad to be here. It's the great. thing, the thing, like we are also looking at West London, so we are at, at the heart of what is happening. Exactly, it's uh, it's it's slightly out, of, it's, it's slightly further out than Dean Street because that's right in the middle of Soho. But, yeah. but in truth, actually, it's only really a twenty minute drive or twenty minute it's drive. Far, it's, it's, yeah. on, it's, it's on it's on in West London, yeah. and I live in West. Oh well, I live west out in Hertfordshire, so it's actually a great plus for me because I just come here no, quickly. No, no. Uh, thank you for having us uh, at the Cube, and uh, this is the end of uh, our little podcast and video with Andy Wright, our producer of the first album of Punt Guns. It's been a pleasure. And hopefully we go for a chapter number second here in Cube, West London. Heart of a new music, you know. It's all coming up here. Thank you, Andy, for your time. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Andy.